if you don't know Randy Lupke, he's um, he's well known. Um, I'll give you some of his credentials. He's a registered financial consultant and an independent fiduciary investment advisor with over 35 years of experience. Now, just for those of you who don't know, there's a very small percentage of financial advisors that are actually called independent fiduciary advisors. So of approximately 308,000 advisors in total in the United States, only 1% of them are independent fiduciary advisors. And Randy is amongst that 1%. So that's a pretty good credential right there. Um, he's also a registered mortgage advisor, life insurance agent, real estate broker, mortgage broker, stock broker, and of course, the owner of Lifetime Paradigm. Um, and, and so here we go. Let's dive in. This interview is going to help the anyone that's interested in personal finance. So the small investor, you could be 18 years old, you can be 40 years old, or you can be 70 years old getting ready to retire. We're going to cover it all. And we're also going to cover um, information for small business owners, all types of great stuff. So um, did I miss anything, Randy? No, I think it's a great introduction. Let's jump in. Here's another one. What is the best advice for someone that is around 70 to 75 years old? They're just entering retirement and they have about 800K to $1 million already saved, you know, from a lifetime of saving money. Okay. And they have it set up 50% bonds, 50% stock, and they're getting social security as well. So here's the point. They fear being able to stop working and, and retire. They don't want to run out of money. They fear right. running out of money. Um, should they keep working? Any particular advice? Yeah. So again, everything's, of course, again, specific to the, the situation. Like, for example, so how old is this person, this theoretical person, 70? 70 to 75. So they're, yeah. 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 So, all right. 70, 75, you know, first thing you want to think about is life expectancy, right? Because, um, you know, the runway gets pretty short, or I should say shorter at 75. Now you might live to be a hundred you might, or 110, but you know, the average life expectancy for a male is somewhere in the radius. So it might be only 10 years. Right. And, and this is a problem I come across all the time, um, for folks that, uh, you know, they've been saving and investing their whole life you know, careful, fearful, whatever the word is to make sure they've accumulated enough money because they don't want to run out right after they do stop working. Right. And, um, and so then they refuse to spend it when they need to, right. To enjoy it. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so we really got to drill down on those types of things. You know, is my 70 year old married to a 50 year old, right. Does my 70 year old have, you know, 20 year old kids. Um, you know, it's, it, there's all these different, those the different perspectives you have to take into uh, into into consideration. But what you're really asking is, you know, should I be taking risks with my money? Um, uh, it, it, you know, be, be, because I want returns and I don't want to run out. And if you look at it um, from that point of view, uh, hypothetically, um, yeah, you need to take risk with your money, even when you're older. Right. And and, yeah. and and the and the problem is if you lose money and you're withdrawing it, it you get, it's like a double whammy. Right. And uh, it's called the sequence of withdrawal risk um, uh, is, is the, the theory we're talking it's not the theory. It's, it's just math. So during during the accumulation phase, during the phase where they're putting money into the investments and and uh, and they're, they're saving, 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 but they're not spending. Market goes up, market goes down, market goes up, market goes down. They're still throwing money in, right? Dollar cost averaging, whatever it is. If you take yeah. all those ups and down years over like the last 40 years and average them together, the, the rate of return, let's say it's 7%, right? Mm -hmm. Now, now if you, if you take that same sequence of returns that you had over the last 20 years, right? Because I'm 70 and I, and I, and I lay that in. Uh, on a on our spreadsheet over the next 20 years, but now I start withdrawing money out of the account. What you'll find is when the if you're withdrawing money in a year with the account goes down because of the market, you'll never have a chance to recover, and it could spiral down and spiral down, and you could run out of money very quickly. Right. So you have yeah. to you have to make investments that give you downside protection, but that still have the upside opportunity to make money. Right. 
that, and that's you know that that's really what you're what you're looking at. So you can start with longevity and health and financial need, and then you work backwards to say, okay, what can I do now to my, to mitigate or eliminate my downside risk? Um, to, uh, to and by the way, one of the best tools um, in my toolbox for that is um, it's called a fixed indexed annuity. You ever heard of that before? Fixed indexed annuity, FIA. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it, it, you know, again, the industry uses a lot of kind of coded words, but basically when you see the fixed part of it in, in the, in the, in the nomenclature, it means you want, you're not going to lose any principal, right? It's, it's, it's guaranteed like a CD. And then the index okay. part, right? The index part says, I'm still going to invest in, in the stock market so I can have higher earnings. Um, and so you put the two together, I'm going to invest in the stock market in a way that I'll never lose principal, but I can still have the opportunity to make money. Right. And so a fixed index annuity is yeah. a really good general tool uh, to apply for somebody in, in the uh, uh, demographic you just described. 